Good evening, everyone. My name is Anthony Martin. I am a student at Liberty University in this class, Persuasion. And I want to discuss with you today some matters that have concerned me about the direction of our country. Uh, I want you to imagine, if you will, uh, you're just finishing high school. Uh, you've done all you've done to do right. You've had good grades. You followed structure in your life. And here it is at the end of your journey of high school, you apply to a college, uh, or even an Ivy League school, say like Harvard or Stanford or somewhere like that, or Brown. And you've had good grades, you've had A's, you've had B's all your life. You apply and you're turned down. Also imagine in your mind that, that you're working for a particular company and you've been there, you've been faithful to the company, and you apply for a different position. And when you apply for that different position, you find that you're turned down. You're not turned down because you're not educated enough. You're not turned down because you're not smart enough or, or your personality. But you're turned down simply because of the color of your skin or even the fact of your, that you're a female, that you've been turned down for this particular job. The United States uh, has an executive order, number 11246, that was implemented in 1965. What it does is it requires federal contractors to take affirmative action uh, to improve the opportunities of uh, demographic groups uh, like women or racial minorities, such as yourself in this room. Some of the key points that I wanna bring out to you today is the decision of the Supreme Court to retract years of, of, of president and also the, the mistake in that judgment and to sum it up, what can we do to change that particular thing? The one thing I wanna do uh, that you get from this, uh, this message today is that we become more active in civic and political matters. I wanna prompt you to make a change in your life to push for those things in our country. Affirmative action was overturned June 29th, 2023. I believe that affirmative action is necessary law because simply we have an unbalanced system. Uh, because of the history of our country and the slavery and the unfair treatment of those uh, people of color and women, that this particular thing is necessary in our country. The truth of the matter is America is uh, a racially conscious society. We do see color. People do see color. We have, that has been proven through uh, our history and slavery in this country. The discrimination faced by blacks and women are those with disabilities because it broadens not only those that are black or people of color or women, but those that have disabilities in their lives are also discriminated against. When was affirmative action implemented? Well, the Civil Rights Act of 1964 had a lot to do with it. President Lyndon B. Johnson uh, enacted that and it also gave an executive order in 1965. It ordered that it was unlawful to discriminate according to race. Later it became uh, uh, included that women and Native Americans also were included in this. And until, until 2023, this policy was in place until the Supreme Court of the, our United States decided to overturn affirmative action. Now affirmative action was accomplished uh, that from persistence of civil rights activists, such as Dr. Martin Luther King, uh, President John F. Kennedy had a lot to do with it before his demise, and also President Lyndon B. Johnson and so many others uh, that marched and that, that, that were active in the, in the campaign to overturn or to uh, allow more civil rights in our lifetime. Those rights of, uh, of that uh, all of us uh, share and have uh, those rights in our own community, uh, those uh, that benefited some of us here in this room. I guess imagine all of us here 
in this room have, have benefited from affirmative action. But then here it is, affirmative action was abolished. The Supreme Court's decision wiped away years of progress, years of accomplishment. How would you feel if you were writing a paper and, and you, were, you were in the process of writing a paper and the paper was good and you were almost finished with it and then your computer went out? or someone came along and wiped away all the information that you had inputted in the computer, would you be upset? This is the same matter of what happened with the Supreme Court decision to wipe away years of progress. Those who, who, who never had to deal with discrimination, or never had to really deal with discrimination, made the major decision to do away with this policy. But then on the court, what about those on the court that have benefited from affirmative action. Uh, there were several, there's, the Supreme Court is made up of nine members. Out of those nine members, five of those members can directly or have directly benefited from affirmative action. Three of them being women uh, and, uh, and, and one man actually is one, two, three, it's four that benefited out of nine, okay? Uh, and some that come to mind, the ones that come to mind directly, is that of Justice Clarence Thomas, uh, who voted to overturn. He is a beneficiary of affirmative action. Justice Amy Barrett, who voted to overturn, also is a beneficiary of affirmative actions. Justice Sonia Sotomayor, the court's first Latino, she quotes, she wrote in her dissent, that the decision rolls back decades of precedent and momentous progress. And I agree with her wholeheartedly. This was not necessary. So the question now becomes, what can we do? The decision has been made. Affirmative action has been overturned, uh, dealing with college admissions. So what is it that we can do as a people? Well, number one is that we can become aware of what's happening. You must be abreast on what's going on in the world and in the news and how it affects you in your direct community. Affirmative action is not just for people that are trying to go to college, but those that are trying to get ahead in their workplaces. And, and with this overturning of this momentous decision that the Supreme Court made, will will affect or will be the domino effect of things to come. So we have to become aware of what's going on. And number two, we have to become activists. You have to become not only aware, but you've got to do something. Well, what can I do? Number one is that you can vote. Say vote with me, please. Vote. And a lot of times what we, what we do when we view voting is we view it as only the presidential race only those big races, and we're not as concerned with our local government. But it's at the local government level that things really happen. So we have to become more involved in our local government because it stems from there. The people that we put in position in our local government makes, make decisions that affect those at the top. Now, can the decision be reversed is the question. Well, there's a movie that I like. It's called John Wick, and there's a statement from it that I appreciate. It says, how you do anything is how you do everything. The same way that it happened, the same way that those justices were put in position, the same way that we can get rid of them or, or replace them, especially when the time comes. President Donald Trump, he implanted three Supreme Court justices in his term. This was unheard of for three Supreme Court justices to be confirmed under one president. But he had to accomplish that because of the backing and support of the Republican Party. It is our duty to get out and vote to make these changes. It can be changed. It can be reversed. Primarily, the court should be bipartisan. Unfortunately, it isn't. And because it isn't, we have to to make the effort to make the changes. In conclusion, the Supreme Court was wrong. 
they were very wrong to overturn decades of policies, policies that affect minorities, people like me and you. It has been proven that race-conscious affirmative action programs have been instrumental in, in upholding diversity in colleges while increasing graduation rates. It, it does have a purpose. And because we've allowed these things to happen, because sometimes our lack of activism, we have to deal with it. But it can be changed by you and I, everyone in this room can be effective by changing this policy. I want to thank you for your time. I want to thank you for listening. God bless you.